first of all, you know, I appreciate the opportunity of being back on campus. I haven't been back since 2009, so uh, it's great to get back. It's a beautiful day, and I uh, appreciate, you know, especially since it is such a great day outside of the UH, came to uh, hear some, some of what I have to say today. The format of, of the lecture today is going to be kind of, in the beginning, I'm going to try to talk about some of my background, just so you know the perspective from which I'm speaking from. You know, I graduated in 2006 and 2007. Uh, from the master's program about the ask school about four years. Um, and so that's you know sort of high level of the perspective that you know I'm, I'm able to give you. Uh, whereas I think a lot of our other speakers from the uh, Wachovia Distinguished Speaker Series have been uh, much more seasoned from a career standpoint. And so they can offer insights that are uh, quite different from mine. And hopefully mine are helpful for a lot of you because you're quite young and you're about to enter the career world. And you're gonna be exactly where I was you know, four years ago. So hopefully you find this um, helpful from that perspective. So as I said, I graduated in 07 and, and 06. I started my career with PricewaterhouseCoopers in New York City. I was there for two years uh, with, with PwC and then I moved on to my current firm, which is Alvarez & Marcel. Alvarez & Marcel is actually primarily a restructuring shop. Uh, we you know, normally go into companies that are distressed and try to help turn them around, or if they're the, sink, the boat is, is sinking and there's nothing you can do, we kind of help them sink a little bit easier, I guess is the way to put it. Um, you know, probably the most prominent role that we're in right now is we're the CEO, our Brian Marcel of Alvarez Marcel is the CEO of Lehman Brothers, um, and we're, we're kind of winding that firm down, obviously, because it went bankrupt a few years ago. Um, but we started a transaction advisory group about five years ago that was born out of the big four accounting firms like PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, and since then, we've been growing and competing against the big four um, for you know, obviously the same type of business. And so I've been uh, with them for about two years now, one year in New York, and then about a year ago, I moved down to Atlanta, um, just transferred down there and doing the same kind of work. Oh, and just recently in November, I was a uh, Promoted for the first time, but thank, thankfully two positions. So uh, you know, I, I came without. I came, you know, with the title of manager rather than associate, which is a relief because I didn't want to come with the title of associate and talk to you guys. Yeah, you know, <laughs> wouldn't look like I achieved anything. <laughs> so, just a little background on kind of what I do and what private equity is. You know, private equity is essentially, you know. If any of you are familiar with a mutual fund concept where if you've got a mutual fund, a lot of people give money to the mutual fund, and they have an ownership piece in proportion essentially to the, to the amount of money they invest in the mutual fund. That mutual fund goes and buys stocks. Those stocks perform, hopefully well. You buy the stock for a certain amount of money, you sell it for a money amount that's higher than that, it makes profit and you have your share of the profit, right? That's what all of our investment accounts or the investment accounts that you'll eventually have when you start working and you're contributing money to your 401k, that's, that's kind of the concept, right? And hopefully that's, that's a pretty simple concept. Private equity is very similar. However, instead of the mutual fund buying stocks, it, the private equity firm is actually buying usually entire companies. So rather than buying you know, stock shares in GP, they'll buy a company. So for example, you know, up here, I've listed at the bottom some of the companies that are actually have been or are now private equity owned. Some of the biggest companies that you guys have heard of. Um, you know, Weather Channel, Six Flags, Hooters, Corner Bakery. These are you know companies that a lot of you probably don't even realize are owned by private private equity firms. They're not public companies on the you know the stock market. They could be now, but at one point at least they were owned by a private equity firm. And so that private equity firm's portfolio included some of these companies that are up here. <laughs> so, you know, the way private equity works is the people who are contributing money into the private equity firm are called LPs or limited partners. Now, those investors are generally endowments, um, insurance companies, mutual funds who allocate a portion of their portfolio to private equity, and then also just people who are rich. In order to invest money in a private equity firm, it's usually going to take a couple million dollar investment. So, I'm not doing it anytime soon. <laughs> But my 401k, you know, likely has a small portion of it that's allocated private equity, and they've invested in some of my clients or given money to some of my clients who are now going out to buy companies like these that are listed here. So 
So just a little perspective on you know what do I do in this whole process? My clients are private equity firms, and those private equity firms go out and they buy companies, and they hope to improve those companies essentially, and sell them later for a greater price than they purchased them for, right? And that generates profits. That profit goes back to the investors. The way I kind of I think is the easiest way to describe my role is I'm sort of the the home inspector. So if you think about you know when you're buying a, if you think about the target company as a home, right? That's the target. That's what what you want to buy. That's what the private equity firms want to buy. Well, before they buy that company or that house, they have to make sure that there's no no issues with it, right? From a foundation perspective, in terms of a company, they want to make sure there's no issues with it from a perspective of their finances, right? Their earnings. What earnings is the company generating? What cash flow is the company generating? Because that's what you're buying when you buy a company. You're buying their cash flows. You're buying your interest in their cash flows, right? And so before they buy a target company, they need to hire a financial advisor and they need to do their financial due diligence, which is what I do, on the target company. So I kind of consider myself a home inspector and, and the target is kind of like the home. I go in there, I, I check it out from a financial perspective and I report back to my client. And my client can use that information to make a few decisions. One, how much should they buy the company for? Should they buy the company at all? And you know, how are they going to run the company going forward? For example, we could discover that maybe the CFO is not a very strong candidate. So now our client may decide that you know they they still want to buy the company, but they need to go go start looking for a better CFO or a better COO. So you know, all these kinds of things that we try to uncover during due diligence or during our home inspection, we report back to our client so that they can make a better investment decision. Uh, I guess the only the only other thing I'd like to mention here is that what's very important also is that our report um, that we issue is not just for our client, but it's also for the banks because when private equity firms are buying houses or buying targets, I should say target companies, they're usually not buying it with all their own money or all of the money that people have invested in the private equity firm. They're usually <coughs> buying it with a portion of their own money and they're getting a loan for the rest of it. So just like you know, you guys buy buy happy. Hopefully, we'll eventually buy a house. You're going to put down a down payment, right? That's your equity payment into the house. That's your, that's what money you're putting down. Then you get a mortgage for the rest of it. Now, the bank who's giving the mortgage, right, or the bank who's lending on a deal, lending for my private equity client to go buy a target company, isn't going to do so without knowing something about the target company. They can say, well, if that target company sucks, right, I'm not going to get paid back on my loan. So, how do I know that that target company is what I think it is and what you think it is? Well, they're going to look at our report, and that's what's going to give them the sort of the background information and the understanding of the financial statements and, and the core earnings of the business, um, as well as reports from other diligent providers, whether they're legal, tax, commercial, all these other types of um, areas that you need to get comfortable with. They provide these reports to both the client, and then the client provides them to the bank, and that way the bank gets comfortable and will go ahead and lend money or quote unquote give a mortgage to the the private equity firm to go ahead and buy this target company. This is just a kind of a listing of, of some of the 